How is this limit equal to negative infinity? You have to divide it by zero, so shouldn't it be d and e? All right, let's have a look. Here we have the limit as x approaching negative 3 of x plus 2 over x squared plus 6x plus 9. Yes, the denominator can be factored in. Let's go ahead and do that. We get x plus 3 times x plus 3, so x plus 3 squared. But we cannot cancel anything. But don't worry though, let's start with a good habit first. Always plug in this number into all the x's and see what happens. So we will have negative 3 plus 2 over, let's put a negative 3 right here for this x. So we have negative 3 plus 3 and then squared. Right here, let me draw an arrow because we're taking the limit. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0 and then we have the squared. But 0 squared is still 0. So this right here, we get negative 1 over 0. Now your concern is, we are dividing by 0 already, shouldn't we be able to just conclude that the answer is D and E, namely does not exist? I'll tell you, no. The reason is because we are doing a limit question, not a regular computation. So here is the difference. If today I said the question like this, I'm going to let the function f of x equal to that x plus 2 over let me just put that down, yeah? x plus 3 squared. Let's say I ask you for the first part. I want to evaluate not a limit, but just a regular math. I just want to get a regular value for f of negative 3. See, this is not a limit question. I want to plug in exactly negative 3 into the x. This right here, we will have f of negative 3 equals negative 3 plus 2 over negative 3 plus 3 squared. And we get negative 1 over 0 squared, which is 0, that property over there. Now, because this is just a regular computation, so when we see a 0 on the bottom, you don't really care about what the top is, by the way. You can just draw a conclusion right away. Here though, we don't really say D and E, because this is just a regular math question, right? Computation. For this situation, we say undefined. There's no answer when you divide it by zero regularly. D and E is when you don't have a limit, right? So D and E is for limit, undefined is for regular computation. So this right here, we can draw a conclusion, which is easier. But now, how do we take off this limit though? The idea between limit and this is that here, we are trying to get the value of the function at exactly negative 3. But for limits, we are trying to see the behavior of the function around negative 3. The best way for, you, for me to show you is to show you the graph of x plus 2 over x squared plus 6x plus 9, right here. As you can see, when we have x equal to negative 3, we don't see the value of the function because there is a vertical asymptote. And you see that the function goes straight down when x is around negative 3. Therefore, we say this limit is equal to negative infinity because that's a behavior. The function goes down. We have a vertical asymptote. So that's pretty much it. Right? That it's pretty much it. But I know, I know what the question is. How can we do it without the graph, right? So now let me show you. Here is the key. Whenever you do this for limits, whenever you get 0 on the bottom and a non-zero on the top, you actually can expect the answer to be either positive infinity or negative infinity. Let me show you. This right here for limit, right? It's for limits only. Whenever you have a non-zero number on the top over 0, you can expect to have the answer to be either negative infinity or positive infinity. And to guess so, by the way, it's either or, never both. To figure out which one though, we will have to check the sign. We have to check the sign. So how do we check the sign? For this one, there's a fast way to do it because you see that we have zero square, so that is always positive. Right? This is always positive. Negative one divided by positive, it will give this situation and you're done. But how we check sign, 
you have to be careful as well. I know that means trouble, yeah? How do we check sign? You go back to the original question. You see this is x approaching negative 3. There's no plus or minus. In fact, we have to do both. We have to make sure that both answers are equal in order to conclude that we have the limit. All right, so let's go ahead and do the following. We will have to check the limit as x approaching negative 3. And then let's do the negative first. Yeah, and then let me just write that down. x plus 2 over x plus 3 squared. Yeah? It's the same function, I just put on the factor form. So how do we do that? Again, plugging negative 3 into the x. So we get negative 3 plus 2 over negative 3 plus 2, uh, sorry, plus 3, and then squared. Draw arrow. I draw an arrow because we're taking limit. This is negative 1 over 0 squared. And then that is just negative 1 over 0. It's the same thing, like what exactly is the I do, right? Be really careful. Here it's negative 3 negative. So I should include a negative right here. What exactly does this mean? This means we have a number that's just a little bit. I just think about it. A number a little bit less than negative 3. So think about, right? Think about negative 3 negative as equal to negative 3.001. A number slightly less than negative 3. And then just kind of reason it out. This right here, right, negative 3 minus plus 2, yeah, it's negative 1, but in fact, it's a little bit less than negative 1. But doesn't matter, the whole thing is negative anyway. Now, check this out for the bottom. When we have negative 3 negative plus 3, it's not really 0, but rather it's 0 plus. Sorry, it's But rather, here we have 0 minus. Why? Because if you take negative 3.001 minus 3, you get a number that's a little bit less than 0. Yeah? So that's why I denote it by 0 minus. Now, check this out though. When you square a negative number, you get positive. So in fact here, it becomes 0 plus again. So to make this work like perfectly for you, negative 3.001 plus 3. This right here, it's like negative 0 0.001. This is what I mean by 0 minus, okay? And now I will have to square that because it was squared. I have to square that. But when you square this number, you get a positive 0, 0.00 something in the 1. So that's why it becomes a 0 plus. Now, negative 1 is negative, yeah? A little bit less than negative 1 doesn't matter. Divided by a positive, you can conclude that's negative infinity. So the left limit is negative infinity. Now, check the right limit. So, do the same thing. Let's put negative 3 plus this time into all the x's. So we get negative 3 plus and then plus 2 over negative 3 plus and then plus 3. And then here we squared. And for this, just think about it as what? What's a number that's slightly bigger than negative 3? The answer for that is... Think about it as negative 2.999, a little bit bigger than 3, right? On the top, you just get negative 1, but if you do this plus that, it's a little bit bigger than negative 1. So negative 1, and then with a little plus right here. Over here, if you just do the inside, this time though, you'll get a 0 plus first, right? Because this is a little bit bigger than negative 3, and then you ask you to it, just think about this, plus 3, it's going to be a positive, very small number, so 0 plus, and then square that, and then you get, again, negative 1, and then technically a plus, here, 0 plus square is still 0 plus, but for this one, I'll be careful, because negative 1 plus means like negative 0 0.999, right? just think about it, it doesn't mean that, but like, just think about it as that, a number slightly bigger than negative 1. So the top is negative, the bottom is positive. Again, we can conclude that's negative infinity. So finally though, you see that how when we approach the negative 3 number, 
So finally, when we approach negative 3 from the left hand side, this limit is equal to negative infinity. Likewise, this right here is also equal to negative infinity. They are equal, right? This limit is equal to that. So we can go back to here and say the answer is negative infinity. Hmm? Just like that. So now let me just come back to this comparison here. Earlier, it was just a regular computation. But now, if we have to evaluate a limit as x approaching negative 3 of our function, then in this case, you know, we have to do what we did. The limit as x approaching negative 3 of the function, which is that, x plus 2 over x plus 3 squared, this right here, you will answer it as negative infinity. Yeah, just like that.